I was having a strong itch for something new, but I couldn't quite pinpoint what I wanted until May came along and we got a glimpse of Android 12. Currently we're on the um, fourth beta and I'm actually excited because it's been a while since we've seen a redesign from, you know, from Google about Android. Specifically, around Android 5 Lollipop, we initially received the material redesign and since then we've kind of been stuck, at least until Android 11. But now we're supposed to receive the material U design, which pretty much seems quite interesting, you know? So I decided to make a quick list for you guys with some tips and tricks that you might want to try out. So, hello there guys, I'm Vic from Phone Arena and this is tip number one. We recently received a new icon theme. Of course, it's in beta as denoted on it, but it's also pretty cool. It transforms your app icon drawings into more uniformly colored ones, which are also in line with the color of your UI. Additionally, and this is a small one, the Google logo on the bottom search bar will change its color to match your style. This kind of makes sense though, since the new design is quite U-centered, but still it's pretty nifty. Additionally, your color team is automatically selected, by the way, from your wallpaper, which makes this even cooler. And if you look in settings, wallpaper and style, you'll see right below your wallpaper where you can actually select what palette you want, basically, which is extracted from your wallpaper, or you can actually select colors manually. And uh, by the way, if you're a fan of this type of content, you can hit the subscribe button and, you know, see how that goes. So moving on to tip number two. If you were a more of a productive person, then you'd be glad to know that notifications have also received a slight redesign. You now actually have a bigger, more legible icon for expanding your multiple stacked notifications. And if you don't want to click on that, you can also just click on the icon of your um, specific app, basically on the uh, left side of the notification, which should also expand it. It's pretty handy and I actually prefer this because I constantly have a lot of notifications and when I want to expand something, I really sometimes misclick and you know, it just opens up the application, really. So yeah, that's pretty nice. Now, the third thing I want to mention I'm using the Pixel 4a here, so I shouldn't really have a problem with one-handed use. But still, if you do use a larger device and would like to make it a bit you know, easier for you, there is a uh, handy one-handed mode in settings, system, gestures, where you can actually choose to swipe down on the notification bar. I'm actually trying this out now. And this should technically just lower down the top of the display to the center of the screen, which should make it easier to reach all nooks and crannies. It's much like what Apple already does, but it's cool to see it implemented here, finally. And much like on some other Android and all Apple devices, you can now use your power button as an assistant one. If you navigate once again to gestures, you'll find an option for what the power button should do when you hold it down. You know, you can simply change it to call the assistant instead. And if you want to shut down your phone, you can do so from the uh, notification panel where you should have a button for that. This is pretty much similar to what already Samsung does and you know, Apple does. But still, just to make it clear though, I'm not exactly a fan of this option, but at least it comes disabled by default and like on most new Samsung devices. It took me by surprise when I first tackled this particular feature and uh, yeah, I quickly found out how to shut it down without actually um, going inside settings to um, turn off the feature, but still, it's, it's a bit annoying. And here's a pretty useful tip here. Before, when you played a song, you'd always get your music player pinned on top of your notifications, but now you can actually disable that pin, which is pretty nice. It should be also implemented for most other applications, so you can disable it for specific applications. More specifically, I would disable it for Google Podcasts, because it never really tends to remove itself. I stopped playing my podcast, I shut down the application, and it still doesn't want to uh, remove itself. Therefore, this option is actually pretty useful for me. Also, if you've noticed, the music player is now colored according to your theme's color palette instead of choosing the album's color, which, um, you know, some people might be a fan of, some might not, but I guess it's okay. And it does make sense when you think about it. It matches the material you design. Basically, you, you know, color palette follows everything alone. Another not a school but still useful option we received here with Android 12 is the 4x5 grid for the app icons. It's not exactly something amazing because some other phone manufacturers have already included this option prior to Android 12, like OnePlus and I think Samsung too. But at least now it's something native to the operating system. The nice thing about it is that icons should be now smaller with a bit more spacing compared to the 5x5 or 4x4 grid. Of course, if you're not into icons as much and like widgets, actually use them mixed, then you can rest assured because the widget menu has received a slight redesign. Widgets are now grouped by apps, which is pretty much logical. I don't know why 
this wasn't the case. Well, they actually, they were gripped, let me clarify. But now, they're more inside of a, like, a folder structure. You have to click on the app and it just expands and shows you the widgets for the app. Makes it a bit more compact, a bit more legible. They're tucked in, so to say. And we now also get a search bar, which makes finding that right blob of info that much easier, which is also cool. By the way, if you've scrolled through the widgets, you might have noticed that there's also a new conversations widget, which uh, basically shows you the most recent messages, calls, and status updates that you've received. Of course, I don't find this particularly useful, since I can always just check my notifications, but I guess some will find it ideal to use. Of course, it does look a bit bland as it is now, but we're hoping it actually improves in some way, or, you know, maybe it's just for those people who actually uh, swipe away their notifications and still want to see what messages they have. And here's a quick handy tip for when you're on a holiday at a hotel with the family or when you have friends over at your place. If you want to share your Wi-Fi without giving anyone your password, you could always just input it yourself, but Android does give you the option to, uh, you know, generate a QR scannable code and then the person could just scan it and connect. But now you also have an additional like uh, bonus, so to say. You can use, you know, Android's nearby share, which technically should let you share even easier. Of course, it's not as fast as just telling the password to someone and actually making them input it. But of course, if you don't want to share your password, it's something logical and I kind of like it. I actually would use that quite a lot. Also, have any of you guys noticed that you can now swipe away your screenshot? You know, the small quick pop up that goes on the bottom left of your screen instead of actually clicking somewhere. It's pretty dope. By the way, in the event of an emergency, you can press your power button five times quickly and that should initiate a five second countdown to call the emergency services. The phone number should be set to your native one by default, but if it's not, you can change it in settings, safety and emergency, emergency SOS, you know, in case it's not 911 or it's, you know, 112 for you, whatever it is. And also there's an option to um, kind of have, uh, how should I say, an alarm that goes off with each and every second passing by so you don't accidentally just, um, you know, turn on this feature, which has happened to me a couple of times. But at the same time, if you're being, you know, chased by someone, you wouldn't want to actually, uh, give away your location by uh, having a strong noise beeping. Hey, you know what? The dude you're trying to catch and rob is just hiding down behind this corner. Yeah, you, you can hear it. Yeah, yeah, it's getting louder the, the more time passes. Yeah, it's really uh, not great for those situations, but still quite cool if your child presses five times on the power button quite often. Oh, and uh, here's another nifty one. Whenever you copy and paste something like a link or whatever it is, you should receive a notification that shows you which app access to your clipboard. It's not something super amazing, but it's useful to know which app does what while you casually you know, decide to send not safe for work links at work, say. Here's another small yet obvious thing we should have had. If you're using the pop-up player on Android 12, you can now pinch in to zoom in and out of your video instead of actually having to drag on the corner. And get this, you can also just swipe the video to the side. It just hides it almost fully and you can actually continue on replying to your text and then just continue watching your video. And uh, you know, finally, I'd like to top off with one of my personal favorites, or maybe possibly my favorite. Whenever you want to share something online, instead of taking a screenshot or bothering with the link, you know, the top of your browser, you can now just grab the photo or link directly from the app recents menu. You know, just go into recents, you get a pop-up icon, which uh, is either a link icon or a photo icon, you can just click on it, or you can click directly on the image or the video you're watching, and it just gives you either the link or the photo itself. And it's pretty cool, you don't actually have to take a screenshot and you have a clean snap of what exactly you're trying to share to somebody else. I was pretty tripped out when I first saw it, not gonna lie. So yeah, that was actually really nice. So I think that covers a good amount of what I found useful, but again, some features are not exactly finished. Like the one with the icon team. Some are yet to be introduced and I still might have missed some. So what are your favorite tips and tricks on Android 12? Let me know down in the comments below. Please subscribe and I'll see you guys some other time.